Hi everyone, I'm Emily. And I'm Vince. And this is The Lighthouse Lowdown. Oh. What? It's like when you take a sip of coffee and it's just like this slug of caramel comes up your straw. That sounds delicious. It's just... I love slugs of caramel. There shouldn't be anything solid in my liquid. Eh, it's a semi-solid. So it throws me off anytime I'm drinking and it's like a piece of ice comes in my mouth. I'm like, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Starbucks. (laughs) Thank you for the caramel. For the caramel slugs. We've got caramel macchiatos in the studio today. So we recorded yesterday and we're doing back-to-back recordings. So we should be extra warm. This one posts first. We're doing a series of two international lighthouses nice the first one is going to be this one we're going to sweden for this episode and vince and i will be going to sweden in real life when you hear this episode i think we'll be going to that lighthouse that day so my instagram post will come out a little bit late so i can include my own pictures so you can think of us in sweden when you're listening listening. yeah that see how much stuff is proven wrong by (laughs) us being there Honestly, it's because everything's in Swedish. All, everything is in Swedish. And you yeah. just be like, oh, you Google Translate and it works fine. No, it's not. They're not. <laughs> it's not a straight translation. It's, no, well, it's just like, it's not a flawless. So, and it'll Google Translate things that aren't supposed to be translated. Right. It just translates things like, like um, in this episode, we have the term by fear. And I don't think I know what that means. Yeah, it translates. Google translates it to B lighthouse. And it's like it's that's absolutely not. It's like B I. Fear is lighthouse in Swedish. Or okay. Fear or something. It's right. Like, I I'm just gonna <laughs> pronounce it like an American because I can't. <laughs> We're gonna guess. I can only do so much. Here. I accept that. <laughs> so um, logically, you would think that means. Two. Two, like Split. second lighthouse. Yep. But Google translates it to B lighthouse, like B E E, like a bumblebee lighthouse. Oh. Do I really trust that or do I just go with intuition and just be like, it's all it just means is second lighthouse? Anyway, so that's been the struggle of doing international lighthouses. Not just that it's hard to find information on them, but it's all in another language that yeah. Google does its best to translate. But, you know, that's all I have to work with. Well, if anyone knows Swedish and is listening to our podcast, please enlighten us. Yeah. If you ever, if you hear anything that's just straight out wrong, like even like um, years and like history and stuff, I don't like, I'm just going to trust this jumble of broken English that Google's delivering to me. That's all I have. Find some Swedish resources. Get it all sorted. I thought about asking Chase. Well, I looked up how to pronounce the letters in Swedish, you know. So it's like maybe I could walk myself through yeah. the, my own pronunciation of words. But And who is Chase for the listeners? Oh, Chase is my brother. He lives in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Chase, he didn't know. <laughs> yeah, we're visiting him when we're going to Sweden. So Yeah, we're yes. so we're visiting him in Stockholm for three days mm-hmm, About on our way to Spain. Spain for a friend's wedding. Yeah going to be a lot of fun. But yeah, we'll uh I think we should do that. We should talk to him and ask after what we recorded. got wrong <laughs> with our recording here. Oh no. Yeah, we can cover it as a history buoy or something yeah, in the future. Yeah, just a little add-on. Well, the the more you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> we'll have a whole segment on how wrong we are about stuff. Yeah. Well, that, you know, we could fill a couple hours. Yeah. So, definitely. we're uh what about a month? No. Yeah. Three weeks? Three, three, oh. About three weeks we'll be heading over there. Oh, so. gives me anxiety. Cool. <laughs> See which Fun. one of us is an avid traveler. The other one's just like, Ugh. It'll be good. We'll have a good time. Yeah, you'll be there, so I feel a little bit better. I just went on a little traveling escapade recently, and yeah. uh, I definitely just need some familiar... You had some good stories from that one, at least. I did, yeah. It was a good time. Story is not for the podcast, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> for a different podcast. Yeah. No podcast. All right. For uh, listeners, it's a bachelorette trip. So. Yeah, we don't. Different context. <laughs> no lighthouses were involved. 
unfortunately. So today, I'm going to start out with history, but I won't uh, give you the name yet. Oh, okay. Uh, so since we're going to Sweden, we want to talk about, for the history buoy, the history of lighthouses in Sweden. Okay. So you can get an idea of what I that like looks it. like for our lighthouse that we're covering today. The interesting thing is that, like, our next episode is about Japan, and you see that their history starts way later than lighthouses first came to be mm. in the world, you know. It was like eight, middle 1800s Crazy. that Japan actually started building lighthouses. So that's insane considering even the U.S., which is a very young country, especially compared to Japan, yeah. has lighthouses that start over 100 years before they got around to it. Yeah. So it's interesting that in Sweden, talking about the history of lighthouses there is the same as talking about the history of lighthouses of all time. One of the places where the earliest lighthouses are seen. And so you can just talk about the history of lighthouses in general, and it applies to Sweden. Nice. Kind of crazy. Uh, so That's crazy. I started, I did talk about this in our history of lighthouses episode, how lighthouses came to be. And it's the same for Sweden, is that the beginning was just bonfires on hilltops. <laughs> and elevating the fire obviously improves visibility. Yeah. And so eventually fires were placed on platforms, which is how lighthouses came to be. What were they called, do you know, before it was a lighthouse? Because a lighthouse obviously is a conjunction of a light being present at someone lives at this place. A sea mark. A sea mark. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, there's... I like uh, that mention of it well the first lighthouse in sweden was lit in 1561 the oldest known sea mark is the falster bow <laughs> um uh, <laughs> that's crazy i, I can't falster bow falster bow uh-huh sea mark from 1260s all right <laughs> i was gonna say about the 1500s i can't name any other single historical event that i know happened in the 1500s oh really I don't know of any offhand. I bet I could look some up. Or 1600s or 1400s. Yeah. Let alone 12. I'm pretty sure this was like before Rome. Was this Roman before Roman time? I have no idea. I No, that can't be possible. I, no. I knew this in middle school maybe, but you know. What happened? It's been a couple years. Here we are. 1560s. Okay. The complete Geneva Bible is published. Not familiar. Uh, me either. The first tulip bulb is brought from... Contest, constant, con constant, noble. Const <laughs> okay, none of these are recognizable. Let's Tulips, see. all right. No, I don't want that to be the only thing. <laughs> uh, the Mongols invade and occupy King Hai. <laughs> wait, wait, I, I say Mongols. Oh, the great age of piracy in the Caribbean starts around this time. Hey. That's what we want to know. Running champagne. We need to... <laughs> We need to stay on brand. That's what we're going to say. Pirates. Pirates started. And we did talk. Actually, we did talk about that because mm -hmm. we talked about. I didn't I didn't connect those years, though. Hog Island That seems Lighthouse. like a lot longer ago to me. 1500s. So, anyway. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Originally, uh, firewood was being used for these little hillside yeah. bonfires. And in the 1500s, it changed to <clears throat> Upna Col Ferrar. <laughs> <laughs> which translates to open coal lights, which just means okay. that the firewood was replaced with coal in braziers, braziers, um, on platforms. Okay, like a brass can, like yeah. dish mm -hmm. container, brazier, bra brazier, brazier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, in 1560, King Frederick II of Denmark ordered that three brazier-type lighthouses would be built, the first and oldest in Sweden being the Kolin Lighthouse, which still is there today. How's, this, how's that spelled? K-U-L-L-E-N. Oh, okay. It's not like Twilight. Not Cologne. Oh, no. <laughs> I was going... Colon. <laughs> I was going a very different uh, direction with mine. Any Twilight fans out there? I'm All right. not familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing? Twilight? The Collins. Is it a name? It's the last name of the vampire family. Yeah, I didn't know that. Moving oh. on. <laughs> it's spelled differently, which is why I was excited that you asked. Anyway, 1636, a special type of light became common in Sweden called Vipfia. <laughs> Vipfia. I love the pronunciations. <laughs> I'm trying. 
trying. But it's almost makes it worse that I'm trying and failing. You got this. <laughs> Just think of Aho. Why do you keep bringing that up? <laughs> <laughs> it's painful. So in this type of light, coals were placed in a metal basket, was on a long stick. Cool. And it kind of operated like a light switch and that it would be raised and like you would lower the basket at one end of the stick to fill it with coal. And then you would pull down on the other end of the stick to lift the coals Ooh, into the air. A teeter-totter. Yes, it's like that. And so that it was a raised f- burning coals so that yeah. you could see them. Hang on, I got a picture. Here's what the uh, open coal looked like. Blow that up. <laughs> All right. So it's a rock platform with a staircase leading to the top of the rocks mm-hmm. and a handrail. They're very, you know, ahead of their time. Yeah. I don't know what the center is. I assume it's like a table of material. Like I think it's firewood, like coal. It's open up here, coal goes in here, and this is all just like aeration or something. I thought the coal was in the lantern on the right. This? Yeah. No, that's just probably for so they can see when they're going up the stairs. Ocean I came know. in and was like, hey. <laughs> I don't know. No, this is where the fire is. You're certain? I'm positive. Well, what? why do they have a lantern? So they can see that going up the stairs. I don't feel like that's a concern of the 1500s. Why not? I don't know. You don't think they cared about safety? It didn't get dark. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't ever dark there. Their stairs were much better than modern stairs. <laughs> All right, well, I learned something new. So big stones make up this tower, which looks about 15 feet tall, 20 feet tall. Yeah, maybe. With uh, some coal burning apparatus atop of it. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of see from this picture how the remnants, it's the, it's the beginning of lighthouses. If you just put a dome up here, then it just looks like a lighthouse. Yeah, all I need is glass. All right, here's the fifth fear. That is cool. Yeah, so it's it's like a little teeter totter. I am seeing a question. Okay. How do they? So there's like a rope coming down from the basket, so they can pull it down. They got a counterweight on the bottom side. They probably lift that off. Man, that's got to be well balanced for it to come down and be refilled and go back up. Mm-hmm. This is just a replica. So this is somewhere in Sweden where you can just. Well, they did not get lazy with the replica. Assuming that this is what it looked like in the olden days. In the days. 1500s, yeah. How do they find a stick that long? Tall trees, I guess. <laughs> this is impressive. So, yeah, that's what it looks like. Those were common um, at the same time that they had open coal lights and then eventually they get phased out. Next, after these came coal lighthouses in brazers with polished metal plates for reflection so it was like one of the earliest cases of using a flame's reflection to enhance the light at the end of the 1700s there was still only about 10 lighthouses in sweden so between you know mid 1500s and the end of the 1700s we still only had made about 10 lighthouses so it wasn't like they were booming but they were putting them where it was necessary for like trade and ports. yeah okay at the end of the century A Swedish engineer invented rotating parabolic reflectors with clockwork and was the first of its kind installed at a Swedish lighthouse, which was pretty common. Look at them. Yeah, like that's is probably the bare bones of starting clockwork in lighthouses for flashing patterns and stuff. Yeah. So pretty cool. I can't imagine inventing that. Like what it has to be going on in your brain that you're like. I just got to figure a way to make this rotate. Yeah, well, even why? Even if you got the idea from something, it comes to you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you got the idea. Now, between the idea and making it work reliably, like a physical thing, mm-hmm. that's really impressive. I always found it like hard to imagine that people were hired as inventors. You know, like they, they were meant to do research and their inventions came out as a result of all that research. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was just like, how do you be employed as a researcher, like as an inventor? And at what point is it no longer like today? Do we still have people who just research and try to invent stuff? I'm sure they do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm... Anyway, moving on to the next century. In the 1800s, lighthouses in Sweden soared past 400. So obviously the 1800s was a, a time of growth for, for Sweden when it comes to lighthouses. 
And the franolins were introduced to Sweden in the 1840s, but it took a while for them to be applied to the lighthouses that they had just because it was definitely expensive. It was expensive but worth it, which is how the franolins spread so easily to other lighthouses. Okay. They proved it was yeah, worth, worth, the the, cost. worth the cost. The 1900s in Sweden brought along electrification, but it was really slow. For some reason in Sweden, they just took a long time to electrify lighthouses. Hmm. They probably just had their system and weren't going to worry about it too much. And this was also true for automation. And in the 1990s, so really not that long ago, there were still 90 lighthouses that were still being tended to by keepers. No way. Yeah. And in the U.S., you know, it, it was like... 1850s? No, no, no. no. no it 1950s. Was like, ni- yeah, about like 1950s, 1950s. 60s. <laughs> so they took a long time to still do that. That's nuts. That's like, that's the highest we've heard of. I know. Of anywhere. I wonder why. So I'm sure today they're all automated because everything's wireless. I think so. I think all of them are. But the 90s, that's The 90s. That's they really They still cool. have keepers. I don't know. It sounds crazy. Cool. And that's the history of lighthouses in Sweden. Are we going to see a map of Sweden? Uh, I don't have one. Would you mind looking one up? Is that going to throw you off? Because I'd like to learn some more. I know we're going to Stockholm and Stockholm, well, we're not going to Sweden other than Stockholm, but... Um, it's an archipelago, as I've been told, mm-hmm. a series of islands. So obviously, waterfronts are many there. Yeah, but I don't. But not know, that many lighthouses. I don't know my geography. Well, I think to some point, if you have too many lighthouses in one area, they would actually be harder to navigate yeah, than if maybe. you had key points to either stay towards or to stay away from. Yeah. Yeah. So here's Stockholm. It's a little islands. Yeah, lots of water traffic. So can you zoom out? Show Sweden. I think Stockholm is actually South Sweden. See how wrong I am. Kind of. It's kind of South. It's on, so it's on the East Coast and the Baltic Sea. So the lighthouses are likely, well, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Gothenburg, those are Oslo. No, Oslo is Norway. Those are all Sweden, though. Gothenburg, Copenhagen, and then up the entire inlet, which is the Gulf of Bothnia. Bothnia? Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> it's like Bosnia with a lisp. Cool. Thanks. I, I wonder where the lighthouses are mostly. Near the cities or... Because near Stockholm, which obviously we'll talk about, I think, because that's our trip. Mm-hmm. There's not many, right? We just talked about the archipelago. No. Yeah. I, I really just happened upon this one because it was... There's a couple of lighthouses, but they're modern. They're more like... Boo. There's yeah. towers. They're more like... Metal towers. Like seaport lights and not like lighthouses. Okay. But this one has a lot of history that we're covering today. And it's taking us to this little island. Whoa. <laughs> so okay. it is the southernmost island in the um, Stockholm archipelago. Ninsham München. Nin. Nin. Ninasham. Ninasham. I think it's. Ninasham. Ninasham. You know, my family was from Sweden. And I really don't know any Swedish. Yeah, it's hard. It's not. Mm. I feel like there, I mean, there's obviously harder languages to learn because at least some of the sounds in their alphabet are similar to how we would. But there's Mm. also, uh, there's also three more vowels that we don't have in the English language. And I can't remember which vowel it is, but it doesn't sound the same in English, like it it's hard to learn because we don't have that oh. sound in the English alphabet. I wonder if it's like German at all. Like that A right there. Yeah. Is it, in German, it's an A umlaut is uh-huh. that mark. So it's, it's again, it's a pronunciation difference. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, there's a, there was some, I can't remember which vowel it was, but it was like, the closest thing we can give to you for an example is, and I was just like, oh, we can't even, like you can't even try to, understand it just by reading yeah. like you have to hear someone say it to understand yeah like there's i'm going to totally guess george bro versus Sorotorn. so the u versus o sound <laughs> depending on and at least in german that's how it would work yeah so i don't know we'll learn something <laughs> i don't know hopefully we can t- tell you more from an educated perspective yeah we're doing our best um so we are going to land sort the island of, <sighs> hang on, 
Is Landsort not the island? Landsort is the town, I think. And the island is called Oya, or maybe it's... What oh, is the, yeah. What, what's the O, umlau? U. U. What? U. U. Uya. E, E, E. Oh. Uh, someone who speaks German is going to be like, bro, you're just making stuff up at this point. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying, doing my best. U. 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 Yeah. Wow. The island is. Can you, can you show me the name of the island? Can you zoom fight. in or something? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, that way I can rip a guess away. You don't have to feel so bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably pronounced like ja or something no like no that. It, the 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 j is ya right but maybe if it's behind an o umla no i read the pronunciation rules okay so it's ja, ja. it's not it's ya <laughs> ya <laughs> <laughs> i really hope i'm right landsorts gastam and stuga i'm sounding german now landsorts <laughs> Fire. Fear. Fear. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. When they when I yeah. hear when the Swedish when a Swedish person uh pronounces it, the R isn't really uh it's not really accentuated. Yeah. Like your R is where you go emphasis. fear and it's like the R is not really there not as fire. much. So I sound like a French person fear. It's like Oh. That that's how. so worldly and educated. So okay. other than oh yeah, it's ooh yeah. If it, yeah. if it was, if it's what, what I'm it? totally guessing, e versus o, oh, it's two different sounds. <laughs> I can't get that sound. E e e e e <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for the listeners at this point. So we're going there. If you're yeah. looking on the screen, yes. Okay. <laughs> if you look at a map of Sweden, we're going to the, like I said, the most, the southernmost island in the sweet up. Uh, Stockholm Archipelago. O J A. O umlaut. 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 J A. Which I think means out loud. What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Confidence know. is waning. And at the very bottom of this little island, uh, it's very. It's three mi- about three miles long and half a mile wide. So it's a walking island. Uh, cars are not there, so you cool. have to either rent bikes or walk. Wow. And at the very southernmost tip of this island, not including this tiny, teeny tiny little piece of land sticking off, yeah. is um, Landsorts Fjör. Okay. Sorry, Lonsorts. We're Lonsorts not, we're not Fjör. Lonsorts Fjör. And that is the town of Lan- Lonsorts Lighthouse. And so Lonsort is the town. Yeah. Lonsorts ownership. Lonsorts mm-hmm. Fjör. Okay. Yeah. Our lighthouse that we're looking at today, I'll show you a picture. It's very unique shape. It's the most of the lighthouse is perfectly um, cylindrical and white. And then at the top, they added a portion that sharply tapers. It's like a cone shape. Oh, and it's bright right. red and ends at a black lantern room. So cool. it used to be this white cylinder with the black lantern room just sitting on the flat surface. And then they added the tapered point. Um, I don't know if I wrote notes about why that is or if it was it. just to lift it a little bit. Uh, uh, like Other than that, I don't know why they would do it. But yeah, it makes it a very unique looking lighthouse. It's 83 feet tall and currently has a third order lens with a light characteristic of FL. This is a special one. Flash. Yeah, flashing. And in parentheses, one plus four. And I did read that they are, it's like an exciting thing to have. It's like not a normal flashing pattern to have. And I'll tell you about it in a second. But oh. one plus four, W, 60 seconds, 22 nautical mile. The one plus four basically says it's a flashing pattern of like you have one flash and then there's an eclipse and then four fast flashes and then the eclipse rapid fire yeah so the way that this one is it's like a 60 second period but you have one second quick flash and then you have i think two seconds of darkness and then four quick flashes and then the rest of that minute are darkness oh weird Mm -hmm. so it's very intermittent yeah yeah and it's white and something we'll talk about later which I already kind of mentioned, is the second light, 
which has a its own flash pattern but is also in the lighthouse and it's its characteristic is um occulting white red green for 10 seconds and 14 nautical miles and i had to work hard to figure out what this looks like and i'll show you a picture when i start to talk more about it okay but it's very cool it's not something i've ever seen before so, so there's two lights by like we talked about yeah the by fear that that's where this came from is okay yeah okay. it's the first time i've heard of anything about it so but it's a thing let's learn more let's dive into the history of this lighthouse 1651 a wooden lighthouse tower was built the first to be built on swedish land by swedish hands so there were a couple lighthouses before this one but they were built by the danish i want to say okay and so this was the first one to be built by swedish i want to say engineers but it's so long ago i don't know if, yeah yeah carpenters constructors carpenters <laughs> stone masons yeah swedish construction people <laughs> <laughs> swedish plumbers clearly i don't know how things worked the sheet then. metal workers went out there it was originally lit with tallow candles and copper um so a little bit of a reflection thing going on yep. and they couldn't decide on ownership after it was built uh, there was two guys who were involved in making it and they couldn't decide who was going to they didn't have ownership over before it before they built yeah, it. Yeah, so it was abandoned a year later, <laughs> which is so funny that they're like, no one can have it. Yeah, like, well, we just fine, like we just leave it. Then nobody gets it. It's like what? <laughs> Crazy. Here, let me go ahead and pull up a picture as you can see. Lawn sorts fear, 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 fear. <laughs> Pretty little town with no roads. Yep, there is a walking path from top to bottom. It veers off in a couple places for you to see the, you know, the fun things about this island and lawn sorts. But we're going to talk about that later. Pretty image. It looks um, sturdy in this image. It's very perfectly up and down. <laughs> yeah. There's no taper on that white main body. I think that's maybe why it looks so resilient in this picture. It's just because the sides are perfectly straight of this lighthouse, which is not something we see. It's normally like a conical yeah. lighthouse. Although I would guess it would actually be easier to build a straight wall. Yeah. Than a tapered Especially wall. as far back as we're talking about. Like the, this wooden lighthouse tower is not the same one that we have today. Right. The one that I talked about. But um, I, I guess I'll go on. And so it was another 15 years before Johan van der Hagen got a royal charter to build a new lighthouse from wood, tallow candles, and some kind of mirror reflection thing. Johan van der Hagen. Johan van der, van der Hagen. Van der Hagen. Hagen. Van der Hagen. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This one burnt down in 1686. And Ouch. so it was like another it's like 17 years um, that that lasted before it was burned down. And it couldn't find what burnt down the lighthouse, but considering we were still using open flame in a lighthouse that might that's be the wood source. like maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's you know oops what it was hey 17 years ain't bad then yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> for a, a wood structure 17 years of not dropping the ball for a wood structure that has an open flame in it at all times sometimes unsupervised pretty good yeah. 17 years so a year later a contract is signed to margareta van der hagen and what happened is that it was signed to her husband, Johan, Johan, and he was dead at this point. And so she just took it upon herself to... How did he die? I don't know. I think probably natural causes. Like a fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Sorry. Uh, this Johan's past. Yeah. The contract was for a new stone tower in the same place and was to be a coal lighthouse because we were talking about at this time the crown was starting to convert their little lighthouses into coal lighthouses instead the of the crown of sweden the crown the king and our queen oh i didn't look this up i saw it just before i closed my notes and i just threw it in here but in 1719 a russian pillage happened mm, um that sounds bad and this is all translated so i'm not sure if that's the exact translation that it's supposed to be but they attempted to burn down the lighthouse but because the walls are a meter thick and stone, it survived and still stands Hold today. Hold on. The walls are six feet thick? A is meter, that a meter? A meter is three feet, I think. Oh, my A gosh. yard is three feet, so a meter is somewhere. No, I think a meter is six feet. 
Let me. I gotta look. prove me wrong. You're not a meter tall. Well, I'm like one point two meter meters tall. Three point two. Three point two eight feet. Oh, I was just totally wrong. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I Aren't should you know better. An engineer? Well, <laughs> you're an American engineer. I'm an engineer in training. <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing. We worked with uh, it's Imperial, right? Yeah, Imperial yeah. units instead of metric. Anyways, uh, I should know that. But wow, still three feet. That's half of what I was thinking. <laughs> I, I I wish I had had time to look up more about what this Russian pillage was and if it was like a war we were having or something, but. Uh, that's all I got. In 1839, so for like 200 years, nothing was really going on at this lighthouse besides the Russian attempt at burning it down. Which is no small event to the people who were there. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> it's crazy because that isn't listed in Lonsort's web page of history information. What? Is this attempt to burn it down. I saw it in just, you know, some some other like um oh, what's it called here let me see from it's the lighthouse's perspective it's like atlas mm. obscura someone tried to burn it I've down i've definitely used that before i don't know Idiots. if it's credible but okay that is where the I read atlas it. obscura so in 1839 the crown takes control of the lighthouse so originally margareta was given she was allowed to tax ships that came by using the lighthouse nice. and keep all of the money she was balling out of control yeah so it was after about I think it was four years, maybe five years, the crown started taking a third of that. But it was still like a pretty good <sighs> amount of money. And she had a place to live for free. So it was just, taxes, it was wonderful. Taxes. 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 <laughs> so did you, <laughs> thank you. Did she live in the tower? Is there a, a residence within the tower or is there a separate keeper's I don't house? Know. I, I don't see, I don't really see one here. And it was never mentioned if there was a keeper's house. But I'm also reading. There could be room in there. There could be. Well, you can set up tours. Oh. It's turning into a pain in the butt to try and do it from the U.S. So Chase is going to get a text here pretty soon that says, please call this number. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so taxes. But yeah, I don't know. They're taking a third. Yeah. So eventually, I mean, I, I don't know about how the ownership transferred. Obviously, this was over 100 years later. And so Margareta's not there anymore. So maybe her kids had it or something. But eventually... The crown takes control of the lighthouse again, so they have ownership Money. over it. And a year later, it was renovated or rebuilt. I couldn't, I found sources for both, but okay. let's translate. I don't know. <laughs> kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I always get more sad when it's rebuilt because it's like, oh man. Yeah, take away some years. of the shine. Yeah. Some of the age. So we'll say it was renovated. Um, and it was given modern oil lanterns and a parabolic reflector system. So we're updating this lighthouse um, Roughly what year? 1840. Okay. So I'm not, um, I don't know. This is about when they were doing frontal lenses, right? Yeah. Yeah, about in that time frame. Yeah, so it took another 30 years after that before they brought in a frontal lens, so I'm not sure what the stopper was because at this point there weren't that many lighthouses going on. And this one's one of the oldest and in the southernmost part of Sweden, you'd think, or uh, Stockholm, you'd think you care about it having a bright light. I don't know. I wonder where the shipping lanes are. If these are people only coming to this island or if they're using this as a, once you find this lighthouse, then it takes you up the coast to Stockholm via the shipping lane. You know what I mean? I bet at the time this one was goes, more of an entryway. One goes up to the left to into the all left. of that. No, this is a, a property line. Oh, a border. Oh, excuse me. Oh yeah, I saw that before. It's a county border. Either way, it's yeah the leading edge of land out there. You would not want to run into it. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. And at that time, it was it was like um, like a defensive position as well. And I'll touch briefly on it looks kind of how militant. that affected yeah the island. But in 1870, the top part of the stone tower is removed and replaced with this red conical metal top. Oh, they actually shortened it. I think it just meant that. They just took off the top layer. Yeah, they so just they could build into. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, they also converted it to a tower with clockwork and a frontal lens. So cool. We've officially modernized. It was a second order lens, fifty seconds of white, two and a half seconds of an eclipse, and then five seconds of red, and then a two and a half second eclipse. So pretty cool. So that is a lot. It's a lot of 
50 seconds of white is like it's almost fixed and then they just had this tiny moment of red yeah and that was it kind of fun interesting it got electrified in 1938 and was given the third order lens from another swedish lighthouse i didn't look too much into it but 1955 it got a bifear which is a second beacon inside the tower at a lower level than the main light with its own light characteristic. So we talked about that as well. And I, I last night, you heard me get excited because I was like, yeah, you're I looking just, for something. Yeah, I was like, I just happened upon something that I had a question about. And it was a angle of the lighthouse where you can see the second light yeah. from the inside. I could not figure out where this light was coming out of because it's got tiny windows. It's got a door. Like, where is the second light? Yeah. And so I found a picture it is also a Fresnel lens. It's fifth order and is the fixed white, red, green. Basically, let me show you a picture, but I'll try to describe it first. It's like the Fresnel lens is facing a slot in the lighthouse or a window or, yeah. you know, some opening. And they have glass plates in front of the Fresnel lens that are different colors. And so it's like if you had glass doors on a door frame that's what it looks like yeah, and one okay. of them's gr one of them's green one of them's red and then there's a tiny space in between the two where it would just be white light filtering through so when you look at it you're just seeing an illuminated window basically that's green white and red and there's a frame lens behind that so it's super powerful so what, what's the purpose through. of that so at some position you can tell yeah it's like just more direction oh that's cool yeah so i just pulled up a picture for him to take a look at that's and really cool I've never seen anything like that. I know. Me either. Oh, well, when I first passed this, I was like, what kind of weirdness? I didn't even pay it any attention because I was just like, I don't know what that is all about. That's That has nothing to do with this lighthouse, but it sure does. And this never moves. No. Let me show you a picture. Weird. It looks like it's open. Wow. That is on a rock. It's hard to tell, but look, you can see this red, white, and green coming through this window. Helicopter photo. <laughs> <laughs> So what, uh, would, what is that then? So it's telling you what the position. It's probably just another way that when you're you're sailing around the lighthouse, once you see this, that maybe you're you're either on the right path or the oh, wrong path. Oh, you're passing it. Yeah. So this is not this so second light is not facing directly out to sea, in in like, you know. Right. It looks like so if you're coming up, this is facing south. I'm thinking. So if you're coming up to the east side of the island from the south you'd be passing you'd see red and then white for a moment as you're parallel to the light and then as you're passing the light it would turn to green maybe i think i don't know well what do red and green or red and blue mean on boats and planes isn't that showing starboard and port side yeah uh, if you yeah red and green are usually indicating like which side of it you want to be on with your ship but I don't know if that's relevant here because really the red and the green are just the light colors that go far enough. You know, mm. it's like, yeah, you don't want to use colors that aren't going to be visible even close to like yeah. if you used purple or something, you wouldn't right. see it for a long time compared to white. You know, the, the nautical mile difference yeah. would be a lot. So well, that's pretty cool. Maybe if you're coming at it, it would show you you're good to go to the south, to the left, to the red side. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the right side, you're going to run into the island. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Let's see if we can learn more. But that's cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah, maybe I'll try and make that a history buoy. The the science of the, the colors they selected. I do think you're right. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Positioning it, 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 it makes it more complicated that this is just coming through, instead of coming through, you know, 360 degrees, the top of a lighthouse, yeah. it's coming through just a tiny hole in, in the side. Yeah. It's not one perspective. Yeah. It's not going to be visible from and I very doubt, many angles at I all. I doubt there's one on the other side. No, I don't think so. There's just one in there. Interesting. Bye, fear. <laughs> Bye, fear. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Moving on. So it was automated in 1963. And nowadays, the lighthouse gives tours at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. every day during the summer months. And nice. by appointments at other times. Who you contact for an appointment, I cannot figure out. I've sent emails to a couple different places. Is it not technically summertime in May? I don't think so. I think it's still springtime. It's actually chilly. 
Like, have you seen what the weather is no. like? Especially on this island, it, it was. I didn't make notes on it, but is talking about how the climate is very strangely different from the mainland. Things that happen on the mainland don't happen on this island. Whoa. So it's like a whole separate climate going on. But while we're there, the high is an average of 50. And the, the all, yeah. <laughs> and the all time high that's ever been on that island during in the May is 75 degrees. Whoa. <laughs> that's cool. So. It's uh, going to be a little chilly. I think the all-time of... low was 24 degrees. Oh, okay. So it's pretty stable. Well, yeah. And actually, I was looking at the weather for this like coming week, and the difference between the highs and lows are only about two to three degrees. Water keeps it stable. I guess so. It reminds me of Triangle Island. That was true also for the Little Ross Island. Yeah. It, it, was, it was always talked about how things were very different. Just, I mean, it wasn't even that far away. It was just like 300 yards or something. Yeah. But things between there would just not reach the lighthouse interesting maybe we can learn more about that too talk about it but yeah yeah weather patterns on islands that that would be a cool if you have not topic. if you have not listened to triangle island it's one of the episodes that i got to do it might have been my first one i think it was um and it, yeah it was a lot of fun there's some <laughs> good, some good weather stories up there yeah so what's the outside is that brick or is that like a the outside of this tower we're looking at. It's it white might, texture. It might be a coating stucco. like the Ochrecoke Lighthouse. Yeah. It kind of looks like it's got that same texture going on. But I, I know it's a stone lighthouse, but if it's it's got to have some kind of coating mm-hmm. on it. And then the, the red looks like a sheet metal. Yeah, it's like iron or, or, or maybe, I think iron. Something strong, I'm yeah. sure. Little lightning pole on top. So cute. Oh, I so badly want to climb it. We have to make an appointment and I got to figure it out because I want to be able to go inside. There's pictures of people climbing it, so it's possible. I just... Do you know if you climb it, can you go to the red platform or if can you go to the light light room? Um, maybe, I don't know. Maybe both. Maybe we could just ask. There's a handrail at both, so... But we know no Swedish, so I'm hoping yeah. they know some English. <sighs> that's just the hope. I'm sure they will. <laughs> But that's that's all I have on Lonsort's fear. And Lonsort's I'm going to talk about fear. the island a little bit because okay. if we're going to be visiting, maybe we can talk about what we want to do. Oh, gosh. What is it? You ha ya uya 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 Like I said, southernmost island in the archipelago. It's about three miles long and half a mile wide. And it's a very quiet town with only 27 people living on it. Nice. Um, but a lot of people have summer homes here where they vacation. And it really at any time of the year, because I think things are a lot more mild, at least weather wise on this island than in the mainland. So one of the first few things that pop up when you look up at this island besides the lighthouse is a pilot tower. And it's basically like an airport control tower, but for boats. And so pilots would be directing, basically directing traffic of ships to make sure that they wouldn't be hitting rocks and right. stuff make sure they're heading in the right direction it's newly renovated and now a hotel with a renowned chef working there oh. so if you stay at this hotel then you get really delicious meals okay and they have pictures online uh on their website and i i'm linking everything that i looked at everything i'm referencing is in my gonna be in the show notes there's a ton of references i think i have like 15 different links where yeah. you can look at stuff there's two rooms per floor and there's a shared bathroom on each floor and two people can stay in each room but they're like little twin beds so we'd be like it's like we're in a dorm (laughs) (laughs) the restaurant svedtilias is where the chef works and it's part of the hotel experience is the restaurant and i believe you can eat there by appointment not in the summer months and so that's one of the phone numbers that I'm going to have Chase call us okay. be like, if we can arrange to eat there when it's not. Yeah. So you mentioned this is a pilot's tower? Pilot tower, yeah. Which is now a hotel as well. Mm-hmm. So. I don't think there's, I don't think it's used. Pilots are people who go out on small boats, on pilot boats, mm-hmm. and get on large boats and bring them into port or take them away from port. That's, that's what I thought pilots did. Okay, maybe. So I don't only know that because I was sitting in Alaska at a dock and mm-hmm. I saw a boat that said, I'm pretty sure, now my memory's failing, <laughs> it said pilot boat. And I was like, what's that? Yeah. My dad told me. We saw some old guy get on and get taken out with a backpack. And I guess they like jump on a ship 
And that's their whole job is because they know the port really well. Oh. So they take over the boat. From, In my head, I was thinking they were up there and this was like... Like radio communication? Yeah, that they would and maybe. connect and talk them through it. But you could be right. There could be... There's just not a lot of places to jump on and off this island easily. Yeah. And they would have to cut around to the um, the west side of the island, mm -hmm. which would be make it very difficult for them to continue on the pathway up towards Stockholm. I don't know. So... I don't know. Hopefully we'll learn some yeah, more. Yeah, we can ask when we get there. But if you make an appointment and special arrangements, you can sit on the seventh floor of the pilot tower. So oh. you get like a nice view while you're eating your Seven floors. Food. Oh my gosh. Wednesdays during the summer have live music uh, on the terrace nice. and really delicious food. You I, Look at my show notes. There, there's pictures of the food that they serve. And also there's been a lot of blog posts from people that go to this restaurant or stay in the tower. And they have really nice things to say about the food. Nice. So I'm hoping we can go there. If not, there's a pub called Lonsort Saltboden. I don't know. <laughs> that, I don't have any other information. But that, the that's the, I think they said that's the only other place to eat on the island. Wow. So it's very small. So Smart. hopefully they're open. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be like, okay, well, catch a boat off here. Yeah. So what else is there in town? I mean, people, so their summer homes are out there. Yeah. So it's, like... it's a very popular place for birding. So a mm -hmm. lot of people go to see birds. <laughs> you can rent bikes. There's lots of art, like local art there. There's a plague cemetery. Oh. And south of that, remnants of a labyrinth dating back at least 300, sorry, 3,000 years. A labyrinth, like a, labyrinth. a maze? Mm-hmm. So legend has it that when you found your way through, when they had built it originally, you'd be given good fortune in fishing and fertility. <laughs> 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 and nice. actually, most coastal labyrinths were built to be like magic. Like they built them so that you would pass through it and be given good fortune nice for the fishing season <laughs> apparently <laughs> so there's remnants of that you can go see um just a bunch of like little you can swim in the harbor and there's lots of uh, like half of this island is like a forest you can go explore there's like different lookout points where you can go to and a sunken ship and just things to explore cool and the island's all it's all walkable they have from top to bottom they have a, a walking path where you can rent a bike and like it. Do you know the story of the sunken ship? Um, I read it, but I don't remember it now. I didn't make a note. Nothing to do with the lighthouse? No. Turning off? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Fortunately, The colors got no. mixed up? <laughs> yeah. Cool. But yeah, that Beautiful. is the story and history behind Lansort's Fjör. Fjör. The Bifjör. In Sweden. I was going to try to say the island name again, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing our best as well as we can. We'll and have to report back. Yeah. Maybe we have it right. Maybe we would just be. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I think we got a new audio interface, uh, courtesy of ourselves. And so we sponsored ourselves on that one. It's a big, <laughs> big purchase. But um, it may allow us to do a couple more tricks in the near future, including yeah. playing sounds. So That would be nice can have i can have the pronunciations ready so i never have to say it i just have to click a button and it just comes out <laughs> yeah and i'll have the friends laugh track ready no! to go <laughs> not good all right all right uh let me see i think i have a another photo to show you this is the drawing a drawing of what it looked like before they had added that huh. top on it so probably just took off it made her thick Looks rugged. Looks like a rap album cover. This looks like before that they like maybe repainted it or something. Yep. Maybe it had to get that, a good pressure wash after this. Is that a cannon? Oh yes, I didn't even talk You're about talk any about of that. Military. Oh no, it's I don't have notes on it, but they have a, like coastal. Tell us all about artilleries. It. There's something else you can ex you can. Um, it's a nuclear bomb proof facility what? that's like underground in the island that you can tour awesome yeah it, it's like it was built to hold the soldiers there for a month like without them having to leave wow mm -hmm. i didn't i don't i don't have it ready i can't believe it's something i forgot i wrote it in our our travel notes for visiting here but didn't well i think we should just do a part two after we visit yeah maybe we could do it like a 
recap of the two lighthouses. So, two lighthouses. Well, Lawn Sorts and then the, the Japanese lighthouse. Oh, that was okay. about. All right. Well, cool. Yeah. It's gorgeous. There's a cannon in this photo, I think. Yep. They've got... Gosh, I can't believe I just never look it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go to our show notes. I have lots of references and websites there if you want to go check out the things that I've talked about. And also in the show notes will be a link tree link where you can follow us on any of our social medias or figure out how to contact us or see where you can listen to our podcast. Very good. Thank you guys for listening. We hope to see you next time on the Lighthouse Lowdown.